This is what I usually wear for my run. The lightweight singlet, compression tight short, breathable head, long ankle socks, and a running shoe that support my feet. I have a really good and comfortable experience running in this set of outfits, and let me break it down in more detail with you. Hey everyone, my name is Russell. Welcome to Russ is Running, all about distant running. Recently, I just purchased some extra outfit for my upcoming training session and I have this video idea in mind about the buying guide for running apparel and accessories. So I decided to make this video to share with you guys some of my own shopping experience on what I'm looking for and what I avoid when it comes to purchasing running apparel and accessories. Let's get started. First, let's talk about running top. When I'm looking for my running top, I have set several criteria as my guideline. Number one, the fabric materials of the running top. I'm always looking for a running top that is made out of microfibers or mesh material because this material is lightweight, breathable and have a good abilities in moisture wicking. When we are running, it is really easy for us to get sweaty. So by wearing running top for example that is made out of microfiber material, it have a good capabilities in moisture wicking to help absorb sweat and dry it off quickly that allow us to keep running in a comfortable condition. Top that is made by mesh material is also another great option. If you look closely on a top that is made by mesh fabric, you'll notice mesh panel or this little small hole on your running top. This hole is used to ensure good ventilation and breathability features by circulating air through the fabric, helping to regulate your body temperature, especially while you're running under hot weather. When you're choosing your running top, try to avoid anything that is made out of cotton although it can absorb sweat quickly but they do hold it and don't dry out easily this can make you feel heavy and uncomfortable while running so never use any cotton top in your run number two get the right size i have the experience running in a top that is too small to fit me and i can tell you i don't have a good experience running with it although it showed the body shape really well just kidding when you're running in a tight fit top, it will bring restriction to your running movement. I feel it a lot in my arm, shoulders, and chest area. The restriction kind of interrupt my running form because I can't swing my arm in a good motion and I have a breathing difficulties as my chest feel the pressure from a tight fit. I did also think it is not a good idea to wear oversized top to run, although I never tried it before, but I feel by wearing oversized top, it can also restrict your range of motion, somehow make you feel annoying and get into your way while you run. So when you are choosing your running top, make sure you choose and get the right size for you, not too tight and not too loose. Number three, we have style. This is totally based on personal preference and running top comes in few style. We got tank top, short sleeve, and long sleeve. I like to go with tank top or singlet. Sometimes I will wear short sleeve, but most of the time I will just stick with singlet because I feel more comfortable running without the sleeve. In the beginning of my running journey, I always get my running top in black. There is no other color option in my wardrobe because I just love black so much. But it seems I always run in the early morning where the light condition is not really good. So in order to keep myself safe and visible to others, I did start to pick up some pairs of bright and reflective running top. Remember to keep this in consideration if you also often run in a low light condition. Overall, for the style of your top, just pick up the one that you feel comfortable and enjoy to wear for your run. Quick summaries on choosing your running top. Always pick up the running top that is made by lightweight and breathable material avoid cotton top make sure you get the right size so it did not restrict your movement while you run finally consider about your running condition and your own personal preference choose the right one and a favorite one for yourself next let's move on to running bottom i remember when i picked up my running bottom for the first time I have three guidelines. Number one, types of bottom. I noticed there are mainly two types of running bottom in the market, the running pants and the running types. At first, I was not sure which one is good, so I buy both of these to give it a try to see which one I like the most and feel comfortable to stick on for my future training. After testing out both running tight and running pants, I find myself more in love with running tight because I feel more fit and secure running in the tight. While wearing the running short, the skin of my inner tie will rub with each other's causing a little bit pain and discomfort so i just avoid wearing running short again in my run my current go-to running type were purchased from decathlon and pro combat i have few pairs of these for my training this running type were really good in qualities 
cheap and economy. One part that is lacking is its usability because it don't have any pocket for storage. But consider the price range, I have no issue or complaint with this. Number two, usability. I'm kind of the guy that brings stuff during my run. For my training, I'll bring my house key. For race and event, I'll bring my energy gel, key, phone, and etc. So you'll be thankful to have storage to keep all of my stuff. I currently don't own any running type with pocket. So as an alternative, I will use running belt for storage. I did currently looking for running type with pocket. It will be good to have it at the side and around the waist. If you have a good one, please do recommend it to me. When you are buying your running pants or running type, take usability into consideration because from my experience, it will be well appreciated to have storage to keep all of your stuff. Number three, length of the bottom. You should pick the right length that fit your personal preference and provide a comfortable experience in your run. For me, I go with short, medium length of running type. And yes, I feel comfortable running in this length. My range of motion did not be restricted and I can freely lift my knee during my run. When you're picking up your running bottom, make sure to consider the right fit for yourself. Choose the length that is flexible for you to move your leg. Avoid too loose or too tight of a running bottom. Plus, you must feel comfortable to run in the length that you pick. And remember to avoid buying running bottom that feel heavy and baggy because it will make you feel hot and uncomfortable in your run. Quick summaries about choosing running bottom. There are two types of running bottom running pants and running short. Pick the one that you love and comfortable to stick in your run. Consider about the usability, which is the amount of pocket you need based on the stuff that you have to carry. Finally, pick the right size based on your personal preference and the one that don't cause you any discomfort in your run. Up next, we have running accessory. Let me share with you some of the running accessory that are heavily in use in my running journey. Number one, my running head. I always have my running head on during my run to help cover my messy hair and block the wind from directly hitting my face. When I buy my running head, I always look for the one that is made by breathable, light and moisture wicking material. Like the one that I have right now with me is made by mesh fabric. So the heat will not keep inside my head can circulate through the mesh panel to always keep me fresh on the top. I did make sure it come with an adjustable strap so I can easily adjust the size to fit my head properly. Number two, running belt. As I mentioned, I bring stuff along my run so I have a running belt to help me carry my stuff when I am running. When you're buying a running belt, make sure to pick the right size for your waist. Take some time to measure your waist and choose the size based on what you measure and the guideline provided by the seller. I did suggest you guys to go with an elastic running belt instead of an adjustable one because I have a bad experience with adjustable running belt. Even after I tied it really tight on my waist, it will still get loose because of the running momentum. Believe me, it is a really annoying experience, especially when you try to run your best run. So I go with elastic running belt and I'm currently using the one from Decathlon and I have no issue with this. Number three, long ankle socks. I buy tons of pair of these long ankle socks from Shopee and what I love so much about them is the material is very breathable the cushion is very thick make it really comfortable running in it and they are also non-slippery material which might help to stable our feet when we run again when choosing your running socks make sure it is made out of breathable and moisture wicking material to prevent sweat from trapping inside your feet which may lead to problems like blister or discomfort and I also think you will like to have a running sock with a little bit more cushion act as an extra padding to support your feet in your run okay some bonus Accessory. These are the accessory I use, but I don't think it is necessary for you to own it to run, so I just quickly go through it. I have a waterproof running jacket. Normally, I use it in an early morning workout where it is cool and windy outside, and also I use it when I need to get a quick workout done under a light rainy day. The running jacket serves the purpose of breaking the wind for me and keeping my body warm when I need to run under a cool condition. Next, I have my sunglasses. This is a budget friendly option from the brand Rock Bros and I wear sunglasses when I run under sunny, rainy and windy conditions to protect my eye and keep my vision clear. And finally, a Velcro watch strap. And I decided to purchase a Velcro strap because of Kung Fu Z. In one of his race recap videos, he mentioned that he used a Velcro strap to help tighten and secure his running watch in place on wrist, which might help to provide a more accurate heart rate reading. And that's why I decided to give it a try and will let you know once I get my hands on. That summarizes up the accessory I use for running. And now let's talk about the most important 
certain part, the running shoe. I currently rotating between two pairs of running shoe in my run and I think buying a pair of good running shoe is very important for every runners because running shoe is a main component that support your run, protect your feet and provide you a great running experience. If you just begin your running journey, I suggest you to invest your money into a good pair of running shoe. When it comes to buying a good pair of running shoe, here I summarize few of my personal experience and tips to share it with you. Number one, type of running shoe. Running shoe in the market come in different varieties and different varieties of running shoe will serve a different purpose. You have your race day shoe, you have a carbon plate inside, super light, super bouncy, make it super easy to pick up some speed and breaking some personal best. And then you have your daily trainer. It is like a all around shoe, suitable to cover all types of running workout in just one shoe. Finally, you have your speed day shoe, lightweight, bouncy, suitable for tempo and interval workout. First, you need to figure out what you need. It make it easier for you to do research and compare product offered by different brand to get the best deal out of it. Most importantly, get what you need. When I just begin my running journey, I aim for getting a good pair of daily trainer because I can run fast, run slow, run long with just a pair of shoe without any issue. Running shoe is designed specifically for runners because it has cushion and support for your feet. If you run consistently, avoid running in a normal shoe like a flat shoe because it can cause you soreness and injury. Number two, sizing. It is important to figure out the right size of running shoe for your feet because a non-proper fit shoe can cause you a lot of fit issue while you are running. The way I make sure I get the right size of running shoe that I want to purchase is to go to the local store, whether it is a Nike store, Adidas store, ASIC store, or any third-party retailer store. Just go get a visit and give yourself a chance to try out the shoe before you make a purchase. Remember to bring along the socks because the size of the shoe that you want to purchase must be in include the size of the socks and feel free to test out the shoe to grab some feeling of the shoe on feet. If you have any question about the shoe, feel free to ask the help from the customer service. They are great in helping and answering. Just make sure you feel confident with everything before you make your purchase. For me, I size out my shoe half size bigger, leaving some room around one size of my thumb in the toe box. This extra space can help to avoid the impact between my toe and the toe box and make sure the shoe is not too tight until restricting the blood flow to my feet. Number three, brand and price. For brand, I don't pick or stay with any brand. My first pair of shoe is Nike. My second pair of shoe is ASICS. I have a good experience running in both pair of the shoe. I think different brands provide different style of great product as well as qualities of service. As a runners and customer, it is well appreciated to have different company compete with each other to continue provide the best experience for the running community. For the price, shoe for race day of course will be more expensive because it have carbon plate inside. But there are also mid-range and affordable options that provide good support and cushioning. So pick the one that you need and not over your budget. For me, I purchased my shoe using my own money, so I tend to get more mindful about my spending budget. I will search across the internet for great deals or wait until seasonal sales to come before I make my purchase. Like for this ASIC Nova Blast 3, I'm lucky enough to get 100 ringgit off from Spot Direct. Quick summaries about choosing running shoe. You must get a pair of good running shoe if you want to take running seriously. Avoid using a normal shoe to run because it don't have a cushion support for your feet. And remember to get the right size of shoe for your feet by visiting the local shoe store to give it a try first before you make your purchase. Feel free to pick and try out different brands to see which one you love and patiently looking for great deals which will save you some extra money. Basically, that's the buying guide for all of my running apparels and accessories. I hope it can provide some help and guidance for your next purchase. If you wonder where I get all of my product, I will put the affiliate link in the description below. Just a reminder, I will earn some commission if you click and purchase using my link. Okay, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoy. Click the screen to check out more running content. Keep running and I will see you guys in the next video.